All right. Here we go again. Another left-handed guitar. And this one started off life as a right-handed guitar. And evidently it's an inheritance to a guy. And he wanted to play his left-handed. So he contacted me to see what we could do about this. And I said, well, we can convert it over to left hand. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but, you know, the tone bars are going the wrong way. Normally, the tone bars would come, well, right now, the way I'm holding it, the tone bars come up, across like this, and they support the treble side. And as a left-handed guitar, if you were to build it from scratch, you would run the tone bars the other way. But it really doesn't make all that much difference. Not that big of a deal. So my recommendation at first was to just take the guitar and simply put simply put a uh, left-handed nut on it and fill in the saddle slot, flip it so that you got a left-handed saddle slot. Now, this can all be converted back into a right-handed guitar should you want to do that. Play that for a while, and if you're really like, you know, five years down the road, really, really, really wanted to see what the braces would do, then you could come back in and remove the braces and flip them over here and go this way, which would be kind of a lot of work, but um, it's possible, you know. But I bet it's just fine this way. Now, this is a 70s E28, and like most 70s, the bridge is out of position, like all the 70s that I see. I'm not going to say most because I don't see them all, but all the 70s, almost all the 70s that come into the shop, um, the bridge is out of position, so it plays out of tune. However, as you can see, the top on this one is really nice. And so my normal technique of scooting the bridge back and then dealing with the finish scar uh, was something I didn't really want to do on this top because it's, so, it's, it's a nice top. So I suggested, and it needed a neck reset too. So I suggested that we do the shim technique, which is where I put a shim underneath the neck right here and I move the neck that way so that now it increases the distance from the nut to the saddle and that makes it play in tune. And you got a shim under here, right here, which you can see. But you know, and you can see the shim. I don't even really try to hide it. I just stain it a little bit and put a finish on it. And yeah, I can sit here and I can see it. But the deal is, is no matter what you do, it's going to be ugly. <laughs> so you could put an oversized bridge on here and scoot the saddle back, and that's ugly. I just I detest this look of oversized bridges. Um, so that's not even an option for me. I, I, I refuse to do oversized bridges. The second option is to scoot the bridge back. And that's not too bad because I've got my little tricks for doing that. You've got a scar on the front, and that can be ugly, and sometimes I can hide it pretty well. If your top is beat up and scarred already, then, you know, it's already got some cosmetic issues, and so what's one more? So, the other thing is when you scoot the bridge, uh, you put it at a different position in the X-braces, and it's farther away from the X-braces, which makes it a little bit more like a pre-war. So, it makes it a little bit different sound there. Normally, I scoot the bridge, especially when I'm doing a new bridge play. But lately, especially with guitars like this where the top is really nice or for whatever reason I don't want to disturb the bridge plate, maybe there's already had a replaced bridge plate so it's got a small maple plate and it's got a K&K &K pickup on it. And I don't want to go in and disturb that system. If it needs a neck reset too, then I will really think about doing these shims under here, under the neck. And that pulls the neck back. And the only cosmetic deal here is that the 15th fret 14th fret is this way a little bit. It's not lined up right on the body like it used to be. I, I seriously doubt if anybody's going to notice that from a distance. Plus, uh, late 40s, mid 40s to late 40s Martins were like this a little bit. So, the second cosmetic thing is that you can see a little bit more of the rosette right under here. And there's a little bit of an unfinished wood under there, but it's really small. And again, I don't know that you can even see it right here in the video. I think you have to really, really look at it. You see? So that was my solution here. Now, the nice thing about that is, like I've said before, is I did no damage to the guitar. All I did is put shims into here and then build the neck reset into those shims. If 
If God wanted to, you could take the neck off, take my shims off, put the neck right back where it was, and be out of tune again. But I did no damage to the guitar, which I can't say is true if I scoot the bridge. However, if you're taking a big rosewood bridge plate out and putting a maple bridge plate in, then you just violated the um, originality of the guitar. Anyways, so you've got choices here, you know, and it's, it's, to me it's always like a little matrix. You know, it's not just a, a flow chart of clear-cut choices. It's a matrix things where you've got to consider this, consider this, consider this, consider this, and then that determines what you think you might want to do. So on this left-handed guitar here, this left-handed conversion, I use the shim under the neck. I left the bridge alone except for slotting it and then recutting it, which I recut it twice because I didn't get it quite right the first time. I wasn't happy. Um, that's it. And then, as you can see, it's got two pick guards. And we discussed the pick guards a little bit. We were going to go with um, tortoise shell. And I said, you know what? The, you know, the, the tortoise color is going to be really hard to match. You're going to have two different pick guards on it that may or may not look good together. I said, black, black is black, you know. And it matches to me. It looks really sharp. With the black, 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 black. Everything's black right here. And to me, that looks nice. Aesthetically, I like that. Black dots on the pins, black ebony here, black fingerboard, a double black thing. I've seen this look before, and I don't mind it one bit. The other thing about it is we get to use the original black pick card, which has not shrunk that much. It hasn't warped or potato chipped or anything. I did take it off. Um, to relieve any pressure on it because they shrink, you know, and that causes splits in the top. This might be the first one I've ever seen that does not have a crack somewhere. Yeah, no crack. A lot of times there'll be no crack right here, but it'll be underneath. This one was pretty good, but preventatively I removed it and put the sticky tape on the back and stuck it right back on. So you get the original pick guard, and then this is the pick guard that I made. To try and man, I'll tell you what, that was one of the trickiest parts of the things is trying to match this pick guard. It's not as easy as you think, you know. You can scrub around it, but to get a really good looking match is harder than you think. And to get them all lined up right, but I think I did a pretty good job. So I like this left handed conversion. There's nothing that can't be restored, returned back to stock, um, except for, you know, of course, I did the bridge play. I took the big rosewood bridge plate out and put a maple bridge plate in there. I scalped the braces. Uh, we're going to leave the tuners on. And because of that, I also left the popsicle brace in because those two things go together. And that's fun. But I did open it up a little bit, correct some of the 70s issues, and without doing too much damage to the originality of the guitar. So it could still be restored back to an, almost an original 70s. And the main thing is now it sounds better, plays better. I did a full Evo refret on it, did a neck reset, mm, pins. Here we go. So, the big challenge, of course, with the left handed guitar is how to play the thing, you know? Because your chords uh, would go like this. <laughs> I'm out of tune already, because I retune. Um, really hard for me to play the normal chords and I thought you know what here's what I should do I got to thinking about like um, Albert King who plays a you know the actual guitar upside down but Albert King played an open tuning so I thought well duh you know let's try that open G finally now the cool thing about that is it's all open
got to reverse my pick direction to really get that sound right, but let's see. slide guitar but <laughs> where's the note right there gosh that's backwards forced to play a left-handed guitar, that's what I would do. I'd drop it down into, into a different tuning, play open tuning on it. So another left-handed conversion that makes my head work over time. And I'm telling you, man, when you do these left, I mean, just doing the pick guard. You know, I'm used to doing the curve this way, you know. <laughs> I got to turn it up, over and do the curve the other way. And that is it's harder than you think. And I'm putting the jig on here, cut the saddle slot. And I just instinctively want to tilt it this way. In fact, my jig is designed to tilt this way. And I had to turn it around, and then I always push on one side of the jig because that's the side that's nice and square and true. You know, the other side really doesn't even matter to keep it from falling off. And now I'm having to push this way on the jig rather than that way on the jig, and the clamps didn't fit. For whatever reason, I have no idea, but the clamps are used to going this way and that way, and with the jig turned the other way, the clamp didn't fit. Man, I mean, I just had to really think about everything. And doing the nut, of course, you know, you're used to working with the fat fat one over here and going across to the thin, and then going across the other way from fat to thin. And every single step, I had to just sit there and think, okay, this is an A string. Just ignore all the rest of them, you know. This is an A string. <laughs> Put it down. Now, I did tell you one thing that I did do about this with this guitar is... I did all the work to it, and I played it as a right-handed guitar. So I actually sat here and played it for a little bit as a right-handed guitar before I did the nut and the saddle. So I got smart that way, you know. So at least I could hear the guitar and listen to it and check all the frets and, you know, um, just listen to the guitar and see sound, make sure it sounded good. I did all that, and it was my humidifier. Okay, got to go. And then I converted it. So it's a left-handed guitar. <laughs> 